Hey, this is Casey Orr from Rigor Mortis, Guar Ministry, Wizards of Gore, Burden Brothers, The Hellions, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you're with Josh's Metal Motherfucking Monday! It was all crazy <laughs> shit, man. It was, it was a blast. It was, it was n unlike probably any other band. I mean, you know, we were the road crew. Uh, you know, we most of the time we were on guitar techs. We, the, the artist guys definitely were repairing costumes and fixing stuff, you know, and putting together the spew tanks and the backdrops and the castles and the monsters and the meat grinder and all that shit. Uh, it was a lot of work, but it was, I mean... It was really, I'm really proud of being a part of it. You know, I was in and out of the band several times, so I always say I was beefcake number two, four, six, and eight. And uh, <laughs> they got Jamie, you know, there's, there's been four different guys, but I was number two, four, six, and eight. Um, all even numbers for some reason. Yeah, I'm all the even numbers, so I don't know what that means. But, you know, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, it's just something I'm really proud of. It was, it was you know, we were, you know, when I first joined the band, the first few years were just nuts. I mean, the wheels were off and everybody was just getting wasted and crazy partying and, Blah, blah, blah. And then we just, you know, we, 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 we toned it down over the years, you know, for the most part. And, and you know, because you're doing it all the time, you know, you finally just, you, you just can't party every night, you know. And yeah. you got friends in every city. And to them, it's like a, a yearly event. But to you, you've just done 13 in a row. And you're like, oh, yeah, cool. Can't wait to see you next week. And then you get to town and you're just like, oh, I just want to sleep, you know. <laughs> start becoming kind of boring because it's just it's it's a it's a job you know you got to get up oh, fuck yeah start all over again but uh see you start getting older so you know you start start easing back on, on all that stuff but it, it was crazy i saw some shit man yeah that was crazy <laughs> that was one of those things that was <laughs> basically offered to us and we were like oh hell yeah you know cool all right well let's you know what's the deal how much are we gonna get and they're like oh well uh you know we're not we can't really pay you any money <laughs> no but if you don't want to do it we'll find someone else we're just like all right we'll do it um i, I think we got paid like some like zero zero point zero zero three cents per game sold or some something just you know insulting and shitty but that was like Oh, you know, the movies Guar was in back then on us, so it was the same kind of shit, you know. It's like, oh, well, if you don't want to do it for free and be in a movie, then we'll you know, we'll call someone else. And we just, you know, it was cool, though, you know. It was like staying on the radar and doing whatever you can, you know. More right when I joined the band, uh, there was a movie being made called SFW, and they wanted us to write a, a song to be in the movie, like in the credits or something. So, uh, you know, we went in the studio to record a demo, wrote a song, went in the studio. And this is like right after I joined. And we go in and we write this song and we record the song and we give them the song and, you know, they, they loved it. So we said, okay, well, you know, give us, you know, budget and we'll go ahead and properly record it. And they're like, oh, no, no, we like it just the way it is. It's fine. You know, it was a demo. So they're just cheap. And it ends up, you know, it's not even on the soundtrack album for the movie. And uh, somehow it got nominated for a Grammy, which is ridiculous because no one had ever heard the song. It wasn't like it was out there on the radio or it was even like, you know, on the soundtrack album to this movie. I don't even know if the movie was even really out yet. It was just because when we found out we were nominated for a Grammy, it was like, oh, wow, cool. And we bobbed out for a second and we went, what? what? You know, <laughs> Uh, what is this, some kind of, you know, obligation to somebody at Sony or something that had something to do with the, the song? But anyway, so we get nominated for a Grammy. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody could care less. When he told them we were on Beavis and Butthead, it was like we were the Messiah. And it was just oh. like nobody cared about the Grammy thing at all. It was just like Beavis and Butthead or whatever. Yeah, we still don't know how that song got nominated because it was just 
made no sense. No one had ever heard it. <laughs> you know? So it's just like, oh, the Grammys really, don't, I guess, don't mean anything, obviously. Dude, I started out as a fan too. I, we were uh, my band Rigor Mortis was on tour with Death Angel, and we played at uh, Saratoga Winners in New York. Okay. And uh, I was walking around the club, and there was these just black and white Xerox pictures of these weirdos in co in these costumes. I'd never heard of Guar. It didn't say anything on them. It didn't say Guar. I had no idea who they were. But I pulled three of them off the off the wall, and I still have them somewhere. And it's just oh, wow. black and white Xerox pictures. It doesn't say anything. And it was like a year or so later that a friend of mine came home with hello. And was like, dude, what, what, I saw this shit in the store and I had to buy it. And I was like, wait a minute. I, and I pulled out those things. And I was like, okay, it's this guar. And then we, um, <laughs> Rub and Scum Dogs came out. And I mean, it was like a religious experience to me because I, I mean, the reason I played bass is because in 76, I thought Gene Simmons looked so cool, you know? And he did. So I was just like, wow, I want to look like, I want to be that. I want to, you know. And then years later, I'm kind of like runner up to Gene Simmons as far as the costume, you know, band should go. And I end up being Beefcake. So it was, it's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, it was the first time I saw Guar, man. I was just just blown away, man. Just the whole, because I understood what, what they had to do and what they were doing and where it was coming from and how much work it was. And, you know, because I was into the same shit they were, you know, Monty Python and, you know, punk rock, and, you know, I saw the crazy shit that, that sort of went into making, you know, Guar what Guar is. So I got it, and I just, man, I, I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I was, it was really cool when I got to join the band. How did you actually get to join the band? Um, kind of a weird roundabout story. Uh, Al Jorgensen had, had mixed a couple songs for him, I guess in, off, a couple of Scum Dog song, he, songs he had done remixes for. Okay. And uh, they, I guess, had seen ministry play, and Mike Scotia, my guitar player from Rigor Mortis, was playing with them. And I guess uh, when uh, the original flattest, Dewey Rowell, was, was quitting, uh, they contacted Al to see if Mike Scotia was available. And Mike Scotia wouldn't have put on a costume for shit. But I'm sure he just went, fuck that. But I know a guy. And so he hooked them up with our friend Pete Lee here from, uh, from Irving, Texas. And uh, Pete was in a band called Sedition that played with Rigor Mortis a bazillion times, good, long, old-time friend of ours. So he ended up getting the Guar gig and, and was flattest for years and years and years. And then um, when, when Mike Bishop decided to leave, he was like, man, I know the guy, man. I, I know this guy in Dallas. you got to get him. He's the guy. And uh, they, they called me. Well, actually, I had, I had – uh, I'd gone and auditioned for, to play with fear. Lee Ving was putting fear back together at one point. And so I went down and stayed with him for a weekend and audition. I thought I got the gig. And then I get a phone call in between that and, and Guar calling me from Tommy Victor looking for a bass player. And I'm all like, Oh, I think I got this fear gig, you know? So I don't even get Tommy's number. And then the next day Lee calls me and says, Oh, I found these guys and you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, wow, I don't have Tommy's number. That was stupid. And then Pete calls me. Like, I mean, this is within like four four days. Pete calls me and says, man, you got you to gotta come up to Richmond, man. You are beefcake. You got to do it. I'm like, fuck yeah, fly me up. I'm, I'm in. He goes, oh, you're going to have to pay for your own flight and shit. And I'm like broke selling weed to my friends so I have weed, not even making any money. <laughs> and I'm like, I guess I can't. So that, I hang up the phone and I'm like, what the fuck just happened? You know, uh, fear and prong and, and guar and just poof, gone. And the next day, Pete called and said, I talked him into it. They're going to fly you up there. So that was that, man. I learned all their songs and went up there and had to re show them their song, some of their songs because they hadn't been playing for a while. So I'm like, I know, like, all your songs. And they're like, uh, how's that go? You know, and I'm like, damn, you know, what would have happened if one of those other ones would have worked out instead? But, I, you know, I mean, guar is where I needed to be, you know, at least – you know, part of my life. It's like, I feel like that's part of my life that had to happen, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, I, my guess is, is probably about 40, 50 pounds. Jeez. I always say it's more because it always feels like it's more. And probably after the show, it's probably five pounds more than that. Hmm. But it's, uh, I mean, it's, 
it's like it's fiberglass. There's a lot of foam. It's heavy. It's definitely fucking heavy as shit. The helmets, you know, it's, it's, but it, it feels heavier than it than it really is. So when you put it on and everything's balanced, it it doesn't really feel, you know, it doesn't feel as bad. If it's not balanced, you try it on, you hand it back to the guy that built it and said bullshit on that. You know. <laughs> And sometimes you would. You try shit on. You go, I can't do this, man. I can't wear One time, um, Don Dracula uh, was uh, making me a new chest plate. And I guess he thought it'd be funny to give me a bigger, round belly with a big Audi belly button on it. I'm like, <laughs> it sticks out this far from my stomach, and it's got a big ball on the end. I have to play bass. I have to ha- hold it. I'm holding my base about, you know, three feet in front of me, holding the thing up, looking at him going, uh, do, you, do you see a problem? Do you see a problem with her? <laughs> Writing it all down and shit. And I was like, yeah, it's real funny, Don, but I <laughs> – so, But, yeah, sometimes you had to hand it back and get modified. But most of the time it was, you know, you had it really worked out where it was, it was balanced really well and real cumbersome and, and stupid and shit, but fucking looked cool as shit. And, 